Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In 1920, the USS Langley emerged as a significant milestone in the United States Navy's naval history. Originating from Collier USS Jupiter, Langley marked not only the Navy's inaugural aircraft carrier, but also its pioneering use of turbo-electric propulsion. A parallel plan to convert another collier was scrapped due to the Washington Naval Treaty, which mandated the cancellation of Lexington-class battlecruisers Lexington and Saratoga. This turn of events allowed for the transformation of their hulls into iconic aircraft carriers, Lexington and Saratoga. Langley, named after American aviation pioneer Samuel Langley, underwent further transformations, serving as a seaplane tender and actively participating in World War II. However, her fate took a dire turn on the 27th of February, 1942, when she encountered a devastating attack by nine twin-engine Japanese bombers from the 21st and 23rd Naval Air Flotillas during a mission ferrying USA Air Force P-40s to Java. The extent of damage was so severe that Langley had to be scuttled by her escorts, marking her as the sole carrier of her class. As we delve into the world of aircraft carrier construction, it becomes evident that this endeavor is a marvel of coordination and engineering prowess. Building an aircraft carrier, even an average-sized one, is no small feat. It involves a staggering 60,000 tons of structural steel, a quartet of 325-foot-long catapults for launching aircraft, a sprawling 4.5 acres of non-skid surface, and an immensely skilled team of approximately 2,500 individuals working in unison to bring this monumental project to fruition. The endeavor is not only a testament to human ingenuity, but also a financial commitment. With a single aircraft carrier taking around five years to construct at an approximate cost of five billion dollars. And that's excluding the expenses associated with equipping it with fighter jets. With the sheer magnitude of parts and components involved in constructing an aircraft carrier, it's clear that handling this heavy workload requires specialized equipment. Superlifts, also known as bridge cranes, play an indispensable role in the assembly process. These colossal machines, weighing in at around 1,000 tons themselves, possess the remarkable capability to effortlessly hoist and precisely position massive prefabricated modules. In the intricate dance of aircraft carrier construction, these superlifts are the unsung heroes, ensuring that every component finds its rightful place in the grand puzzle. An aircraft catapult is a specialized device designed to facilitate the takeoff of aircraft within limited distances. primarily from the decks of naval vessels, such as aircraft carriers. While they can be found on land-based runways in rare instances, their primary application remains in the realm of naval aviation. 
installation of a catapult on a flight deck serves a crucial purpose, allowing aircraft to achieve the necessary speed and lift for a successful takeoff, even in the confined space of a ship's deck. Indeed, catapults used on aircraft carriers and other platforms require regular maintenance to ensure their safe and efficient operation. Without proper maintenance, these complex systems could experience malfunctions or deteriorate over time. Routine maintenance tasks typically include inspections, cleaning, lubrication, and repairs as needed. This ongoing care is essential to keep catapults in optimal working condition, guaranteeing that aircraft can safely and reliably take off from the carrier's deck when needed. Aircraft carriers undergo rigorous testing, including shock testing, to ensure their durability and ability to withstand various operational conditions and potential threats. Shock testing typically involves subjecting the carrier to controlled, simulated shock waves, which may replicate the effects of nearby explosions, torpedo hits, or other significant impacts. These tests aim to identify vulnerabilities and weaknesses in a carrier's construction that could be compromised during combat or emergency situations. While shock testing is a fundamental step in assessing the structural resilience of aircraft carriers, it represents just one facet of a broader evaluation process. In addition to withstanding the forces of potential impacts, carriers must also demonstrate their ability to navigate swiftly and execute precise high-speed turns when called upon. Vigorous maneuver tests, which form an integral part of this comprehensive evaluation, place a premium on the mobility and agility of these colossal vessels. In the dynamic world of naval warfare, where agility can mean the difference between evading threats and succumbing to them, aircraft carriers must excel not only in their static defenses, but also in their dynamic capabilities. These tests subject carriers to a range of challenging maneuvers, including sharp turns and rapid changes in direction, all while maintaining operational readiness. They mimic the demanding scenarios carriers might encounter during combat or other critical missions, ensuring that these floating air bases can adapt to the ever-changing and unpredictable nature of modern warfare. As we pivot our focus from evaluating the agility of aircraft carriers to another critical aspect of naval operations, we arrive at the concept of FOD walkdown. FOD, or foreign object debris, can pose significant hazards on the flight deck and compound of an aircraft carrier. It encompasses everything from loose metal objects to debris that could potentially jeopardize the safety of aircraft operations. The annual FOD walkdown is a meticulously planned activity designed to mobilize a large number of individuals within the carrier's crew. The challenge lies in not just recognizing the value of cleaning up the site, 
but in motivating participants to engage in this essential endeavor voluntarily. Convincing individuals to take time out of their busy schedules to join the effort can be a task in itself. However, in some instances, participation may not be entirely voluntary, as site managers may schedule mandatory FOD walks, compelling all hands to take part unless excused due to a disability or illness. This underscores the seriousness of the endeavor and its role in maintaining a safe and efficient operational environment. These massive vessels are equipped with state-of-the-art fire suppression systems. One notable component of this safety apparatus is the aqueous film forming foam, AFFF, which the U.S. Navy began implementing in the 1960s. AFFF serves a dual purpose, acting as both a fire suppressant and a means to control combustible vapors, which is essential for ensuring the safety of personnel and equipment on board. Depending on the specific type and configuration of a carrier, multiple AFFF stations can be found throughout the ship. These stations house pumps, flooring, and valves, all requiring vigilant monitoring and inspections to detect any non-conformities or potential leaks. It's worth noting that while AFFF is a crucial safety asset, its use can have corrosive effects on equipment and floors. Consequently, Ship personnel must take necessary precautions following its deployment. One such precautionary measure employed by the U.S. Navy is the use of Ceram Alloy, a protective coating that meets standards set by the Navy. Applied as a preemptive measure, Ceram Alloy safeguards the ship's pump rooms and equipment from the corrosive effects of AFFF. It's a testament to the longevity and effectiveness of Ceram Alloy that, even after approximately a decade of service, it continues to uphold its protective qualities. The testimony of a damage control assistant from a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier underscores this effectiveness demonstrating the enduring value of this innovative solution in maintaining the readiness and safety of these vital naval assets. The engine room of an aircraft carrier is a remarkable space, filled with an awe-inspiring array of machinery and an abundance of raw power. These carriers are propelled by onboard nuclear reactors, where the science of nuclear energy is harnessed to drive these colossal vessels forward. Within the reactor, atoms undergo controlled fission, a process that liberates energy in the form of intense heat. This scorching heat in turn, is channeled to produce high-pressure steam, which becomes the lifeblood of the carrier's propulsion system. With its immense energy, this steam sets propulsion turbines into motion, ultimately driving the mighty propeller that propels the ship forward. Furthermore, the same turbines generate electricity that powers the ship's various systems. This efficient process continues as the steam cools, condenses back into the water, 
and is meticulously directed through the system, ready to fuel the next cycle. However, it's important to note that the nuclear reactor compartment is heavily shielded to safeguard the ship's crew from radiation exposure, and access is strictly prohibited during reactor operation. Engineers responsible for the reactor's operation wear radiation monitors, adhere to stringent safety protocols, work in meticulously planned shifts, and employ careful measures to limit radiation exposure. This rigorous commitment to safety ensures not only the carrier's mobility, but also the well-being of its crew, emphasizing the high stakes and precise expertise required at the heart of this mechanical marvel. Maintaining and servicing massive machines like aircraft carriers often involves the meticulous dry docking process. In dry docks, ships are carefully removed from the water to facilitate comprehensive work on their submerged exterior parts. Preparation for dry docking includes setting keel blocks, readying lines, and ensuring a skilled team is on hand, all under the watchful eye of a qualified dock master. Dock-based winches are typically employed to position ships within dry dock. A critical phase during dry docking is the transition from water buoyancy to dry dock blocks, where any insufficiency in block strength can result in the ship's overturning. For very large vessels, like aircraft carriers, graving docks are often used for construction. As we conclude our journey into the incredible world of aircraft carriers, we've uncovered awe-inspiring technology, meticulous maintenance, an unwavering dedication that make these colossal vessels the heart of naval power. From their advanced propulsion systems to their state-of-the-art fire suppression mechanisms and the precision of dry docking procedures, aircraft carriers stand as a testament to human ingenuity, teamwork, and pursuit of excellence. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.